Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Hansid Radeja. I am working at SD4 at Adobe and here I present solution to day 24th of January Lead Code Challenge. The problem that we have in today is snakes and ladder games and it's a medium level question on Lead Code and I totally feel the same. The question says you are given a board wherein there are snakes and ladders. What do you need to do? You need to identify the minimum number of moves needed to reach the terminal state which is 36 over here in this case. So the grid size could be any starting from 1 up till the maximum value of integers and in, in this case the grid size happens to be 6. We have a board of 6 cross 6 which is 36. The question seems pretty simple and straightforward to understand and it's a live example which all of us have played in the past. So I'll be talking about how to solve this question as well as the algorithm to go about it. Why the presentation? So let's quickly. So the question says you have to start from the starting position which is this one and you have to identify the minimum number of moves needed in order to reach the terminal state. In each move, you, you are basically rolling a dice and whatever that dice value comes up, you will have to move th those many steps ahead. If I ask you guys what are the possibilities of the output that comes when you roll a dice, it starts from 1 and it goes up till 6. So when a dice is rolled, one value can come, two can come, three can come, four can come, five can come and six can come. Any of it can come. And whatever position you are at currently, you will move those many steps ahead which is equal to the value that came on the dice. For example, if you are at the starting position which is one and the maximum that you can reach happens to be seven and the minimum that you can reach happens to be two. But let's move, look further how data is given in the question. There are two states in which the board is given to you. The value can be either minus one, that means you will continue the progression ahead and other signifies the ladder or the snakes. For example, at the second index, you can see there is a ladder. What is the updated value that you reach if you take this ladder? It is 15. This is what is represented in the question. So if you consider ladder, as exact reversal of a snake then if you reach 17 you will be reaching 13 in this case and this is what is specified as this particular index so the board is divided into two states one the minus one value which means continue the progression ahead and other which are greater than zero values that simply means the the destination value that you are going to reach if you land on that current index here the destination value is 13 which is signified over here. Here the destination value is 35 which is signified over here. Here the destination value is signified as 15 which is specified here as well. If you have understood this much then you have understood 70% of the algorithm because interpretation of the question is really important and which is must in this question. Moving ahead we will not do anything fancy that we have not done in the past. We will simply apply simple BFS traversal onto this question. The starting position that we have happens to be 1 and in the first dice roll the minimum value that we can get happens to be 1. The maximum value that you can get out of the dice roll is 6. So from the current position how farther can you go is 7 and the least you can go is 15. So let's check what values are there in the board correspondingly. So at 2, what value is there? 15 value is there. At 3, what value is there? Minus 1 value is there. So as per our question, whenever we see minus 1 value, that signifies continue the progression ahead. We will be moving ahead and rolling out more dices from there. So the final state that came over here was 1 plus the dice resulted in 2. The final state becomes 1 plus 2 which is 3 so we are gonna add 3 onto it and these are the possibilities that we will achieve if we roll the dice only once. Let's proceed ahead. The second possibility of the dice could be 3. So 1 plus 3 gives you 4 and what value do we have at 4? At 4 we have minus 1. That means you have to continue the progression from there. So we'll add 4 into the queue. The next value that we can get is 4. 1 plus 4 gives you 5. At 5 what do we have? We have minus 1. Since it's minus 1 that means continue the progression ahead we will add 5 into the queue. Let's proceed ahead. Next would be 1 plus 5 is 6. 
What value do we have at six? Minus one. Continue the progression here. Do we add six into the cube? Next value is six. One plus six is seven. What value do we have at seven? Minus one. Continue the progression and roll more dice. So, what are the terminal states that we are able to achieve if we roll the dice only once? These are those terminal states. And we will continue doing the same thing. Let's move to the second level. We are going level by level as per our BFS traversal algorithm. And we will pull out elements from the queue and look out for more possibilities. As simple as possible and as easy as per the BFS breadth first traversals that we have been doing in the past. So let's assume we made the second dice roll. And what is the current value that will be pulled out from the queue? The current value will be 15. So 15 becomes our base point. And let's start the processing. The minimum value of the dice that could result is 1. So 1 plus 15 gives you 16. And what value do we have at 16? At 16 we have minus 1. So let's write 16 over here. The second possibility would be 15 plus 2 which is 17. What value do we have at 17? It is 13. So let's try 13 over here. Let's proceed ahead. 15 plus 3 is 18. So 18 we have at 18 we have minus 1. 18 gets added. 15 plus 4 is 19. At 19 we have at 19 we have minus 1. 19 gets added. At 15 plus 5 is 20. At 20 we have minus 1. So 20 gets added. And so does 21. So these are few possibilities with base starting point as 15. We will be generating more possibilities with the rest of the elements from the previous iteration and we will be adding on into the same queue. And this is not something new for us. Uh, we will keep on doing the same thing till the time we don't reach the final state that is 36. As soon as we see 36 has been reached, we will abort the process and whatever value of dice count remains is what we are gonna return as the answer. I hope I made sense to you. To conclude it up, let's quickly walk through the coding section and I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked here. This is a small tweak and an interesting portion, so stay tuned and that forms the core crux of the problem. In the first go, I have created the value n which is nothing but vote.length. I have created a boolean array that signifies whether I have visited that position in the past or not. I have created a queue. I have added my starting position into the queue which is my base statement and added 1 to it. Why 1? Because the starting value is 1. I have updated my visited for my starting value as well to true. Minimum steps is a variable which will actually return the result to me. We start iterating over the queue in a BFS fashion. Queue is not empty. We extract the size y size minus minus greater than 0. The same template that we use every time. We pull out value from the queue that gives you the current value that just the current value or the current state variable that was held in the queue and in case my current state variable happens to be equal to n cross n i simply return the min step variable so this is the abortion condition and this will actually happen when we have successfully reached n cross n position it simply means that we have reached the terminal state moving ahead what we are basically doing over here we are iterating over all child nodes we have created a for loop because uh, this for loop signifies a dice roll activity. The minimum dice roll value could be 1, the maximum could be 6 and with each iteration we will be calculating the updated value. Updated value will be nothing but dice value plus current value. If my die, dice value plus current value has, is greater than, it turns out to be greater than n cross n. That means that places out of the board, we will abort the process and we will continue, we will skip that value basically. Otherwise, what we are going to do? We are going to find out the coordinates that corresponds to the updated value and n is basically passed as a variable to interpret that coordinate. So where we are finally reaching to. We, we extracted the row and the position count. If we have already seen that row in the past, in, we, if we have already seen that cell in the past, we will continue. That means it's a visited node. Otherwise, we will mark that node as visited and in case if my board current value happens to be minus 1. So we will map the current row and column to the board and we will check if it is minus 1. Minus 1 state means that we have to continue the progression. So we will add the updated value into the queue. 
अदरवाइज इट्स अ केस ऑफ अ लैडर और अ स्नेक सो वॉट एवर वैल्यू इज हेल्ड इन दी बोर्ड एट रो कमो कॉलम इंडेक्स वी विल बी एक्सट्रैक्टिंग दैट वैल्यू अप एंड वी विल एड दैट इन टू द क्यू इट सिंपली मीन्स दैट द बोर्ड हैज वैल्यू फिफ्टीन थर्टी फाइव और थर्टीन सो दीज आर ग्रेटर दैन जीरो वैल्यूज एंड दिस कॉरेस्पॉन्ड टू लाइन नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन आफ्टर वी आर डन विद दिस वाइल्ड लूप द इनर वैल्यू वी विल इंक्रीमेंट द मेन साइज स्टेप्स बिकॉज वी आर दैट सिंपली मीन्स वी विल बी रोलिंग अनदर डाइज वैल्यू एंड वंस वी आर आउट ऑफ दिस लूप इन केस वी आर नेवर एबल टू रीच अ टर्मिनल स्टेट विल सिंपली रिटर्न माइनस वन एज वन ऑफ द कॉर्नर केस द प्रॉब्लम लाइज इन राइटिंग दिस फाइन कॉर्डिनेट्स मेथड अप्रोप्रिएटली एंड इट्स मोर और लेस लाइक अ फॉर्मुला और एन इंटरप्रिटेशन दैट यू डेवलप वेन यू विल ट्राई टू एनालाइज द कॉर्डिनेट्स एंड मैप इट टू द वैल्यूज एंड यू कैन गो थ्रू इट बाई योर सेल्फ ट्राई फ्यू ट्राई राइटिंग फ्यू कॉर्डिनेट्स एंड मैपिंग दम टू द करेंट वैल्यू एंड यू ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड दट इट फिट्स इन इट्स रेली डिफिकल्ट टू इंटरप्रेट दिस ड्यूरिंग दी इंटरव्यूज और लाइव कोडिंग सेशन्स बट दिस इज वॉट इट इज Let me just go ahead and try and submit this up. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.